This place just reeks of wildness. It is unfreaking believable. This is the top end. Holy heck! It's a wild frontier full of deadly creatures, epic landscapes, secluded camping, and bucket list fishing. That's actually the um, fiberglass one that the oh, two of Okay, it's not the fiberglass one, it's a real one. We are here to tick off a lifelong dream, to catch a barra in one of the wildest rivers in Australia. Oh. <laughs> Out fishing your boyfriend and Graham. That's what I'm here for, folks. This is the final leg of our epic journey to the Northern Territory. This is the most road thing I've ever seen in my life. Whoa! This is Off Grid. Last time you saw us, we were taking on the best of Arnhem Land, one of the most remote adventure destinations left in Australia. We're now several months into a huge cross-country journey, from Esperance through the top end, and our plan from here is to push out to the Daly River to go barra fishing, before pointing the vans at our final destination of Darwin, just in time to catch an NT tradition, Territory Day. First things first though, We've got one destination in Arnhem we got to see. Ooh, is she dusty back there? You guys going to copy? Yeah, mate, we're floating along here. Lovely jubbly Arnhem land, man. We've got one more day. This is the big one. This is what everyone's talking about. I've been out here once before, Cape Arnhem. Yeah, mate, everyone we have spoken to has said this is a must do. So we couldn't leave this one without ticking it off, mate. I am pumped. I'm feeling like a cheeky little swim too. I reckon the dad bod needs airing. You guys keen? No. No, I'm not, not keen, keen to see. Not keen for the dad bod. Not keen for the dad bod, but I'm keen for a swim. Somewhere out there, there's a niche market, I swear <laughs> to goodness. But for now, Cape Arnhem, let's get into it. Australia is full of mind-blowing destinations to visit, but Cape Arnhem is something special. It's a secluded wilderness that takes you back to a different world, and it's remained pristine for a reason. Access is strictly limited to just a few vehicles a day. And we've got a date today with a fishing spot at the far end of the Cape. This is so sick. It's stunning. This is what you come out here for. Absolutely. Stunning. Oh my Lord. Look at that. This is called Twin Eagles. These two rocky points coming out through here. And yep, it's all ours. Oh my gosh, it literally just gets better and better around every corner. Seriously, look at that. I feel like I'm looking straight at a postcard. I'll tell you what, if you're looking for inspiration to visit Arnhem Land, this bit of footage you're seeing right now, ought to be enough. It might look stunning, but these beaches can make for treacherous driving. Big tip when you're driving Cape Arnhem beaches, you're gonna look down to your right when you first get here and you're gonna see hard sand down by the ocean. And you're gonna think, oh yeah, on Fraser Island, we drive down there. Don't do it here. Stay up high because that sand down there is like quicksand. It is so darn soft, you'll sink to your door handles. Another reason to drive this beach very carefully is because of the local traffic. Turtle traffic, that is. Have a look at this. This is so cool. I love this stuff. This is the track of a turtle coming up out of the ocean. She's gone all the way up there. You can see where she's laid her eggs and then gone back down, back out to sea again. If you look closely down here, you can see where she's dragged a little tail with her. Super cool. If you do see this while you're driving along these beaches, just stay up high and try and avoid, you can see where they've dug, just try and avoid driving over the top of that because there's potentially a bunch of little turtle eggs in there. So cool, so cool. Seeing turtles is one thing, but something even more rare can wash up on these remote northern beaches. How cool is this? It's the front end of a dugout canoe. It's probably come across from Indo or something and ended up on the beach over here. Pretty rudimentary. You can see where they've made a couple of repairs here. Wowzers, to think there's a little dude, probably about my size, sitting in here with his little paddle. A bit broke off and he probably bailed in and swam back home again. And it's ended up here. That gets my juices flowing. There's nothing like traveling in a convoy with some good mates but I get the feeling there's some mischief brewing down the back. So I've just been playing around here in the D-Max and in the bottom of one of these, I have found a spare Nissan key and what appear to be some canopy keys. Now, Graham's old D-Max, I am assuming these are the keys to the big patrol. So what I'm thinking is, 
We may as well just start and uh, start locking his canopy on him. <laughs> Every time he gets out, sneaks off, we'll just sneak up, lock just that Just really on him. make him feel like he's losing the plot. Yeah. Which, to be fair, he kind of is, but... The plot's already gone, but <laughs> let's, let's just see if we can give it a bit of a nudge and speed things up. I think we might have a bit of fun on him. <laughs> Only get one little old man butter did not give me enough time. After a long beach run, we make it to the tip and one heck of a secluded fishing spot. Remote places like this offer some pretty wild fishing opportunities, and that's part of the appeal of all the effort it takes to get here. Unbelievable, isn't it? You can see where we've come from, all the way down there, big old beach drive all through here. You can actually see the escarpment right out in the background there. That's that big steep bit, got to come down to get here. This place just reeks of wildness. It is unfreaking believable. Wild ocean, birds, a couple of campsites back in here too. You've got to book them, need permits for them, of course. Well worth it, well worth it. God damn, this place blows me away. I'm in heaven, freaking love it. Can't catch a fish to save me life, but Soon enough, we're hooking up. Just a little queenie. Whoa, what was that thing that came out of him? Oh, he's got a little, look, he's got a little sucker fish on him. This is cool. With some fillets on board, it's time for part two of the day's mission. And that's to find a safe spot to swim. The waters up here can be dangerous, but we've soon found a pearler of a spot. Look at that. Oh. Crystal clear blue water. Yeah, baby. Right next to this little rocky island. It's a rare privilege to be able to swim in the ocean this far north. And we're making the most of it. temperature of that water, you almost couldn't feel it when you walked in. It was like, am, am I getting wet? Am I actually in the ocean? It's that, yeah, almost like, like blood temperature. Absolutely gorgeous. Folks, just be aware though, if you are gonna swim out this way, you can do it, but you'll notice we kept in the shallows, didn't go out deep, protected water. There's sharks, there's crocs, there's all sorts of things up here that'll make your day very unpleasant. So just, you know, use the old mouse when you're gonna have a swim up here. But if you can make it all happen, that water, woo -hoo, superb. Cape Arnhem offers some incredible camping, but we've got other plans. Coming back to this part of the world has been on my bucket list for years. The catching a barra on the Daly River, well, that's a lifelong ambition. And for that, we gotta head south. So it's time to pick up the vans and start the long journey back down the Arnhem Highway. We've seen a lot of life-changing places in Oz on this series, and Arnhem Land, well, I tell you, it is definitely worth the effort. So folks, keep on dreaming. I am really sad to be leaving this place. It's, it's been awesome. Around every corner, there is just another slice of paradise. So that, for me, I am blown away. I, yeah. I did not expect it to be that awesome. Hey, Sana, put it on your list because oh, huge it is, place in our heart. Yeah, top of my list for sure. Honestly, folks, if you come out here, you need a permit, like I keep saying. Camp out there if you want. Stunning part of the world. So stoked I got to see it again. For us now, though, we're going to head back. And we got to make a mile. We've got 700 odd clicks to get us back into Catherine and our final destination, Darwin, we're that close. I can almost see it. But Steph and Harley still haven't caught themselves a barramundi. If ever there was a spot to catch your first barramundi, it's on the Daly River. And it just so happens that it's on the way to Darwin. And then right at the very end, before we hit Darwin, there's one spot. <laughs> One very, very special spot I need to go to for personal reasons. We'll talk about that more later. For now, let's cue the country and western music. We've got two days of gravel. You think I'm not excited about that? You don't know me very well.
between us and camp tonight, the Arnhem Highway has only one fuel stop. And there's some increasing stress building behind me. We're about, uh, what, 180 k out? Ish. We're just under half a tank of fuel. Hmm. We're gonna fall short by about 50 k's of the nearest town to fill up. Do you know what's really funny about this story? <laughs> Is that before we left Nullamboy, I said to Harley, oh, are both jerry cans full, full up? And he said, no, nah, just one. And I said, should we fill the other one up? Nah, we'll be right, we'll be right. Look. Do we need to go hitchhiking to the nearest fuel station? Mistakes have been made. There's no point in pointing fingers in. <laughs> the finger is being pointed. Fifty kilometres to go. To the next fuel station. Come on, we're doing it. We got this. The little D Max that could. <laughs> She's unstoppable. Despite some serious puckering in the D Max, we've made it in one piece back to Manaroo Outstation. We have made it. We've got in, the fuel light's on, but just got in by the skin of our teeth. Why were you so stressed? I wasn't, but I'd just like to take this chance to uh, just accept my apology. What was that? Sorry? Sorry? For doubting you? <laughs> I think the words were, she'll be right, here we are. Can I get the other one down too, or...? Well, as you can see, the sun's starting to go down and thanks to the magic of television and editing, what has actually been several hours of driving over some pretty heavy going roads, we've managed to condense that down into a couple of minutes. We've got a cattle station about 16 k's up ahead. We're gonna stay there the night. I think she's gonna be a pretty rudimentary camp, get the van set up, have a bit of dinner, go to bed. I, for one, am knackered, but we're still cruising the Arnhem Highway. It's that time of night, creatures are starting to come out. There's buff everywhere. We've seen dozens of buffalo. I just had an altercation with a bull. That was interesting. Just froth on this stuff so hard. To all the folks at home, have a look at this. Can't see that wash away. The heck. This is what it come to, folks. I'm getting old. Holy heck. I can see again. <laughs> The best part of travelling like this is those unexpected, unplanned stops. And with the Mavericks, it's so easy just to set up home, away from home, no matter where you are. Soon the dust has been washed off in the hot showers, the tunes are cranking, and a fresh seafood dinner is on the go. So because we have got fish for days after our little fishing expedition, a bit of fish tacos on the menu, we reckon? Yeah, look, we got in late, mate. There's nothing prepared, so... Fish tacos is quick, it's easy. We're going back to basics. Quick panko breadcrumbs, fry them off, done. Chuck them in a wrap and Bob's your uncle. It's been another amazing day in the top end. What a time to be alive. With the prospect of reaching one of the wildest river regions in the country today, we're opting for an early start, with several hours of outback driving still ahead of us. Soon enough, we're packed up and ready to make a mile. The big Y62 is ticking over 30,000 k's since I started off-grid last year, and it's been love and life on the road. Ooh, yep, corrugations are starting. Right on cue. Just gonna adjust my throttle controller down here. I've got the um, Ultimate 9 EVCX, it's the fancy one, installed in the Y62. Back when we were doing Cape Arnhem in that soft sand, I was actually running a bit of a different mode. I was running adapt mode. Adapt basically means that put your foot down hard, it responds hard. Put your foot down gently, it doesn't respond as much. So it sort of maps your throttle control based on your input. I like it, works really well. But now, I'm actually going to adjust the throttle controller to economy mode. And it just dampens that throttle response. 
I don't need throttle response right now. I'm just, I'm just cruising. I'm literally just cruising along. Call me a bit of a tightwad, whatever you want, but that's going to save me a little bit of fuel. I've got them in all the vehicles that I drive, and I reckon they make just a huge difference, especially when you learn the different modes and how they respond within your own vehicle. After several hours in the saddle, we've made it to our next destination, the legendary Daily Waters. The NT is wild and woolly at the best of time, but this place is on a whole other level. That's a sight to behold. You know, when I was a young tacker, I used to live and breathe fishing and hunting. And the Daly River is something I used to dream about because coming from down south WA, Barramundi, that's just mad, they weren't a thing. I used to daydream in school about getting up here with a four wheel drive and camping on the banks and catching a big barra. I probably should have been doing other things. You know, all my mates were dreaming about cars and girls. I was dreaming about a bloody fish. That goes a long way to saying what's wrong with me. But look at that, there she is, the mighty daily. Listen to that. We're down here now. Maybe I can do it. A lifelong dream, catch a barra in the daily. Fingers crossed, maybe it'll happen. Might drop the vans off, go for a bit of an explore. Now look, the Daly River is teeming with barra, if you know where to look. We've got a local hookup that's going to help a couple of amateur fishers get a chance at a metery. On the way, we get the chance to check out some pretty wild history. I've been told there's some abandoned mine shafts that are still very much open. I fall down them and you'll never get back out again, so I'm just going to be a bit careful about that. Oh, what the heck? That is spectacular. I'm going to park up the big 62. I'm going to go for a walk. This is crazy. Australia has long been a land carved out in the hunt for mineral wealth, but back in the day, that work came with its fair share of risk. Well, how about this for a spectacular location? Mountain range over here, wetland behind. Looks like, I mean, if a dinosaur come walking out there right now, yep, that checks out. It's a copper mine. You can still see, if you look around here, you can see the oxidised copper in the rocks here. So it was obviously a pretty rich old seam through there. Started mining in 1884, and it wasn't long after that that a couple of the miners were actually killed by the local Aborigines. Now, the story that I was told is the local miners tried to steal some of the Aboriginal women to work on the mine. And the blokes were like, not on my watch. And a bit of a fruck hour took place right here on the mine site, and four of the miners were killed. They're buried down here somewhere. 1884, the riches were abundant. Makes me feel a bit funny though when I look at the holes in the ground. This one over here, you drop a rock down it and there's no sound. It just goes to, well, I don't know where it goes to. Now to get to the best barra spots on the daily, you need to get up to some remote tributaries. And for that, you're gonna need a boat. Lucky for us, that's just what we found. Well, isn't this a bit la da We're uh, just about to head out on the daily with a good mate of ours, Trev. He's a professional fishing guide up here, and as you can see, not much he doesn't know about this river. One thing he doesn't know, though, is that the state record for Barramundi, size-wise, is about to be broken today. I'm talking the smallest ever brought in this boat. Steph's going to look after that. I'm going to take care of the metering. Looking forward to today, I honestly, I used to dream of the daily when I was a kid, and now we've got a couple of rank amateurs at the back. We've got this vlog here and a professional fishing guide. I'll tell you what, if he can pull it all together today, is worth his weight in salt. Let's go. Barra would have to be a premier sports fish in Australia. They fight hard, they taste good, and you catch them in some of the most remote places in Australia. And today, I'm hoping we can bring Steph and Harles into the Barra Buster Clubhouse. The daily absolutely teems with life, and the crocs, well, they are everywhere. And these aren't freshies. These are the real snapping handbags, the deadly saltwater crocodile. We're just doing a bit of trolling at the moment, back up and forth, up and down. We're just waiting for the tide to change. We'll get a big push of water come through here, which should bring a bit of bait with it. Whilst we're trolling, though, have a go at this. We've got crocs over here. Half a dozen crocs on this bank here. We just saw a couple of hawks fighting over a fish. Something very similar could happen between Steph and Harley if they catch a barramundi. Something tells me Steph will win. But this place is alive. Look, there's a hawk. Look at him come down here. Place is alive. Daly River. Unbelievable. That's actually the um, fiberglass one that the oh, two of. Okay, it's not the fiberglass one. It's a real one. Yep. 
that, that was that, that's the rigid edge, that one. Big boats are good, eh? I like big boats. After a bit of a search, Trev reckons he's landed us on a possible hotspot. Looks like I'm just standing here, but right now I'm living a childhood dream. So although I look very calm on the inside, remember that bottle of beer I was talking about the other day? How yeah, if you were to crack it, it'd explode? Well right now that bottle of beer is bursting its lid off, but I'm keeping it in charge. Keeping it all under control here. Yeah? First barrow I hooked though, you're going to be asking where's the little girl? Because I'll be making some weird noises. The baits have barely hit the water before we get our first hook up. Yes, Ali. Come on. Come to Daddy. She's a start. Oh, oh. She's gone. Oh. Once again, dropping fish. A bit of a history of that, I think. Was, okay. it a, was it a barrel? Oh, I don't reckon there was a fish there. It's all right. Drop them out. Get it up. Steph soon also gets a bite. The barra here are proving to be slippery. Oh, no. Yeah, that was definitely a metery. I know it was. <laughs> okay, so we're changing tactics here. We're going to throw in a few cherubins. Yep. Go on live baits now. Mm. Haven't had much luck with it on the troll, so. I have also been doing my barra song and dance. Manifesting the barra. It's a short sure thing then. Manifesting the metery. You wait, you watch. A bit of a change of tactics here. Steph and Harley are going for bait, but I refuse. I refuse. I am sticking steadfastly to lures. That is up until the point where Steph catches a metery. In which case, I steal the rod from her hand, push her in. Till then, it's me and a lure. Soon enough, Steph and Harley's tactic seems to be paying off, and a barra is on the line. Yes! <laughs> well done, mate. Cheers, well brother. Done. You have done very well. Oh, Harley, your first barra! First barra. How's that little going out the back there, brother? Well, you caught it on bait, so it doesn't count. <laughs> Why not? So that, folks, is a daily river barra. That is my first barra. I am wrapped with that. Let's not mess around with this one. I'm gonna get a quick measure of him. 56 centimetres, which is a legal fish. Legal Yay! fish. <laughs> Just by that much. With one fish in the boat, the place is lighting up. Although this one is probably not size. <laughs> Oh, it's adorable. So small. It's an adorable little thing. Is that even off? Oh. There we are. And just like that, I'm on as well. Well done, Graham. Well done. Just a beautiful little saltwater barra. You can tell he's saltwater because he's got that nice yellow tail there. Just a gorgeous little barra. On the lure. Frothing. We've all got one. Look, it's a three. Check this out. Three in That's the boat. Cool. It's That's the mum cool. and the dad and the baby. <laughs> See a little guy. The barra are soon flying in left, right, and centre, Yay! and Harley is reeling them in. Ah, <laughs> oh, let's go, do it. Hello, Well done, man. Killing it. Do it, And in. Another one, mate. Beautiful. Just keep them coming. Your technique is almost perfect, you know, like that's a good hookup. You heard it here first, folks. Perfection. It's making me happy. Steph might have caught the world's smallest barra before, but now she's got something that looks to be a lot bigger. Oh! 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 Oh, oh my God! Shake your hands, Andrew. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that is a great fish. Yes. Fish of the trip so far. It's all that manifesting. Talk about an upgrade. I reckon. I'll tell you what, we might have to measure him to make sure that you've pipped Harley, because I reckon you have. Yes. That's all that matters, beating <laughs> Harley. <laughs> so that fish is a 63 centimetre fish. She's done it. 63 centimetres on the Daily River. What more could you bloody want? So good. I don't think this is our fisher. <laughs> <laughs> Outfishing your boyfriend and Graham. That's what I'm here for, folks. Now, what a freaking day on the Daily. Stefan Isles, first barra. And not only that, they slayed as well. Absolutely cleaned up. How many did you get each? A couple? Four. Four. There you go. 
far more important in my humble opinion, we got fillets. We got fillets for days. Beautiful river, the daily. If you ever get a chance, get on down here, speak to Trevor, he'll take you out. Hell of a guide. Wait till you see where we are camped. Well, Harley Eldred, said it once and I'll say it again. Size does matter. I've said it so many times before, but this country just blows me away. This really is the land of adventure. We're loving every minute of it. For tonight's camp, we're gonna pick up some firewood before we head back to the vans. The new owners, Maddie, Jess, Tegan and Paul, have just taken ownership of this little piece of paradise. If you want it, it's got all the amenities of a caravan park, but you are literally camping on the banks and the bush of the Daly River. This place is one of the best campsites I've stayed at in Australia. What a day. This is the day, this is the reason why this vehicle was bought and why I am towing something such as this behind it. Out in the river, couple of barramundi, good drive, Arnhem Land just a couple of days ago. And this place here, holy heck, if you are doing a lap right now, you've got to drop in. This is utter paradise right here. Now, I'm gonna crack a beer, sit down by the fire for just five minutes, catch my breath and just relax for just a second because tonight we're running low on supplies. We've got plenty of fish. We've had lots of fish this whole trip, but one thing we sort of struggle with a bit is getting fresh ingredients. Tonight, I'm making fish and chips, bush style. Oh yeah, she's gonna go down. She's gonna go down, but for now, Cheers, folks. Where the bloody hell are you? Good shot. I might start putting bets on here. Good couples building activity there, so I'd, oh, on, I'd, I'd, I'd ping one in there. Pin it. <laughs> Wins once, declares. Uh, very humble winner too. That girlfriend of mine. Oh, like you oh, wouldn't have been. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen a non-contact sport become contact so quickly. It would be darn un-Australian if we weren't to have barramundi tonight. So we filled him up, skinned him, cut him into portions. Now look, in here I've got some flour. Uh, what do I put? Salt, pepper, cayenne pepper. I like that for a little bit of spice. Now, don't be a wuss. Put curry powder in the mix. I'm gonna coat the barramundi in the flour. That's gonna go in there and cook off. We're gonna do the chips in the same pan. Everything's going in there. I'm gonna make a quick dipping sauce, which I'll do right now. Soy, big old whack of wasabi in there. We're gonna mix that. And wow, it's a collapsible bowl. No one told me it was collapsible. It's gonna mix, <laughs> it's gonna mix the wasabi in there. That was nearly a disaster, folks. Right here, let's get a bit of barracuda mundi in here. You wanna dust, I wanna say dust. I mean, you want to thoroughly coat these barra fillets in your concoction of flour here. And then let's introduce the barra mundi to the pan. Oh, can you hear that? All right, I tell you what, so much easier having a full kitchen set out here in the bush. For my money, grab yourself a van, like the Maverick right here, use the kitchen outside. You're still cooking, you're still doing what you love, but it is so much easier. Trust me when I say it. Ooh, I tell you what, don't play around with curry powder, kids. This is the chips part of the meal. We've all seen the baby potatoes in a can and thought, no bueno, I'm not going there, trust me. Fry them up like I'm doing now, get them crispy, and they are superb. You can, you can get a, a, a masher and just, and just slightly mash them, but I feel like if I do that tonight, we're gonna have issues. This is unorthodox. I'm gonna use this 
as a drizzle sauce. I'm gonna drizzle it over the fish before I serve it so we all get a little taste of wasabi and soy over the top of the marinated barramundi. Let's do a little pour over. Everyone gets a little bit. And that, folks, is Daily River Fish and Chips. Give us your plate, you big oh, this looks yeah. You big dog. Sure. We're gonna cross to one of the uh, biggest food critics I've ever had, Stephanie J Holden over here, who reckons these potatoes are the bomb. Crossing now, live. Honestly, for once in his life, the man speaks some truth. These are the <laughs> best potatoes I've ever had. It's so good. The winner here is getting out and doing it. Barra fishing on the daily. Dreamed about it since I was about that big. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. That was only last year. Trust me when I say, when I was a little kid, dreamt about catching Barra on the daily. We did it. We nailed it. I reckon we're the richest people in Australia right now. Yeah. If you based riches on fulfillment and happiness, we'd be three of the richest people in Australia right now. Cheers to everyone who's rich like us. It's been a long road all the way from the remote southwest of WA through South Australia and the central deserts to here in the top end. But it's a journey I'm never going to forget. What a stunning morning. I've just snuck down to the river. Don't know whether you can see, just over there on the bank, a couple of crocs enjoying the early morning sun. Place is alive, there's birds. Freaking love it here. Steph and Harley, they're doing a bit of a brekkie cook up right now, so I'm going to sneak on back and steal myself a bit of bacon and eggs. Our next destination will be the final one for this trip. And if I'm honest, it's gonna be a little bittersweet heading back to civilization. But of course, this is off grid. And that means we're gonna find the most adventurous way possible to get there. Now, as I've constantly been saying, the end goal Darwin. Darwin could be done today easily, but where's the fun in that? Gonna take the back roads up and then come across the top to Darwin. The reason for that is that there's a very special little body of water with a bridge going across it up here that has got my namesake on it. And a few barrel money kicking around as well. So we'll leave that one for later on. But on the way, I think we might stop, have a bit of a swim, maybe go for a walk and just soak up the last couple of days before we get to Darwin. What a trip it's been. For our first stop off, we're ducking into Kakadu National Park, which is a destination that draws people from around the country and the world, and for good reason. Look at that. This is downright special. It's just a series of cascading sort of waterfalls into little pools all the way down the escarpment. Now look, this one here, a little bit tricky to find. And I think, in this day and age where everything, and I mean everything, is online, this one isn't. So I'm not going to say where it is. It's worth finding, but I'm not going to spoon feed you this one. Some things are best left up to you. When it comes to historical artefacts, you won't find many older signs of humans than here at Norlangi Rock, where the rock art dates back a staggering 20,000 years, documenting life, culture and traditions from the local people that have called this place home for millennia. Just having a quick walk around check, a bit of a refresher course for you. The old rock tamers here from Clearview are absolutely vital if you're towing, and it doesn't matter what you're towing, but if you happen to be towing with a wagon, these things here, well, you gotta have them. What they do is they stop rocks from coming out from under your tires, hitting the back of your van, and ricocheting into your back windscreen. I've seen so many of those back windows <laughs> smashed, and people have got cardboard and bits of plastic over them to try and stop the dust getting in. But, although I've seen hundreds of these rock tamers on the road, the vast majority are actually set up incorrectly. Most people put them on and let this big bit of rubber here hang straight down. What you've got to do, undo these three securing bolts here, 
twist this up so you get that nice D shape in there, then tighten it back up so it hangs with that nice D shape in there. Now we've put GoPros on the side of the vehicles. We've actually seen rocks come up, they've hit this and they get knocked straight back down to the ground again. When they're flat, they can hit it and go off in all sorts of angles, you know, out to the side, they can hit a bit of chassis and come straight back out again. When they're like this, they just go straight back down and fall down harmlessly. So it goes without saying, if you don't have a set of these in your toe, I suggest you jump on the Clearview website and grab yourself a set. And when you put them on, make sure you've got that nice D shape right there. We are good to go. With some iconic tourist spots ticked, it's almost time to bring our adventure to a close and for our convoy to part ways for the moment. What a bloody crack in a couple of weeks. Mate, this has been all time. It's been elite. Couldn't agree more. I mean, just to get the privilege of getting out of East Arnhem Land, the last few days out here, catching your first barrel, I mean, come on. Mate, there's been some massive items ticked off bucket list this trip. It's, uh, it's, no words can describe it. Very true, but life goes on. You guys got to head back to the real world, eh? Yeah, correct, mate, correct. We just got to dart off, get back home, unfortunately. But look, we will see you again. This isn't the end, but uh, we'll see you on the next one. The adventure continues. With that, it's just me and my cameraman left with one more item to tick off. Here we go. Cahill's Crossing. Hope the barrow are abiding. For many people, Cahill's Crossing represents the start of a northern adventure. But for us, it's a fitting way to close out a massive trip. This is another saltwater river that's both tidal and full of salties, so you've got to keep an eye out. But it's also another local hotspot if you're hunting that elusive barra. Well, we've done it. That behind me right there, that's the famous Cay Hills Crossing, named after my great, great, great grandfather. That's not true at all. Not true at all. It's actually named after Perry Cahill. He was an explorer out here way back in the day. Australia's changed a little bit. What hasn't though, of course? The spirit of adventure. What a trip we've had! From the tip, right up the tip of Cape Arnhem, all the way back through via the daily, up here into Cahill's Crossing. I'm still frothing and we're getting near to the end of the trip. If you think I'm enjoying this off-grid gig, you are spot on. I am loving it. Now, today is a very special day in the NT. Today is Territory Day. I don't know if you've ever had a Territory Day, folks. I haven't, but I know there's one thing that goes with it. See you a bit later. It's another several hours of outback driving from the crossing to Australia's more northern capital city, the tropical paradise that is Darwin. But on today of all days, it's not so peaceful. Fireworks aren't legal in most of Australia, but on Territory Day, it is open slather. And for one day only, anyone can become a pyrotechnic expert. Oh! Right, hey, buddy. Yeah, give us that. Get back! Get back! Oh no! Whoa! <laughs> Woohoo! Whoa! Well, hey, let's do another one. Oh! <laughs> Release aid! Whoa! Holy sh! Oh, oh my lord! What was that, folks? <laughs> if ever you are. Anywhere near the Territory for Northern Territory Day, I suggest you check this out. This is the most rogue thing I've ever seen in my life. I couldn't think of a better way to end an incredible journey. But folks, off-grid is far from over, and I can't wait to show you where we're going next. Till then, catch you next time.